Hello and welcome to another Miniature Realms video. My name is Stuart and I'm going to be doing a painting tutorial today. Something I promised a few months ago after I unboxed this model and included it in a project vlog for my British 8th Army bolt action force. Um, so this is a Rubicon uh, 15 CWT um, truck. Lovely little kits. I've got three of these. I've painted one already um, and there's painted pictures um, already up in other videos um, so but I've left the other two um, and I'm going to be painting them at the same time I'll only show you the one but um, I promised I would do a painting tutorial for it so that's what I'm going to do now so I'm going to be using primarily the airbrush to get the, the main colors down um, and then I'll be finishing off with a few effects and oil washes and things like that. So I'll try and keep the video as short as possible and not to ramble too much, but I do fail in that quite often. So forgive me, skip ahead if I'm getting too boring. Um, primed black, um, and, and then I'm gonna airbrush straight onto that. Quite often I will do a zenithal highlight beforehand. Um, but the colors I'm using, because I'm doing 8th Army, I'm using lighter colors anyway. Um, I am able to get the effects I want just by painting from, from dark to light upwards. And the, the four colours that I'm going to be using to start with are going to be the scales, colours, wall front range. So I'm going to start with dark earth, then it's going to be camo grey, after that some camo yellow sand, and finally some sand yellow. So I'm going to build those four colours up. Um, on the, all over the truck, including inside the cab and on the driver. I do do a slightly different scheme for the infantry models. I have done a tutorial for that already. I'll pop a link in on the screen now. Um, but I'm not going to worry about any slight differences at the moment because the roof will be glued on afterwards and I will also be putting a bit of clear plastic in for the windscreen at the front so the driver is quite hard to see so I just want to get an idea of the same kind of colour scheme um, and using the same colours that I'm using for, for the outside of the truck not only speed it up uh, more than good enough for at uh, this scale and from what you can see afterwards but anyway let's get the first coat down which is dark earth so I'm not going super heavy here Just a thin coat, happy to leave some of the black showing. I wanted to aid with natural shadow. So that's what the first stage looks like once it's all dry. So that's the dark earth on, see that the roof is detached there. So you can see I've still left a little bit of the, the black showing underneath just to give me some natural shadow and that really, really helps later on. Um, the next stage is the camo gray. And again, I'm going to try to leave some of the shadow that's already there showing. Um, and just crack away with the airbrush yet again. You see when well, I'm mostly trying to go um, where the light would catch but I do do it upside down sometimes um, so the light is, is normally going to come in from the top from one side so that would mean the other side of the the truck would be in shadow that doesn't look good on a on a tabletop so you have to kind of cheat a little bit and uh, give yourself some artificial shadow so I tend to put the light down the bottom on the sides of a vehicle, um, leaving some shadow at the top. And you can argue that the, where things are overlipped and will provide a little bit of shadow. Um, and then on the tops, I tend to go towards the front of a panel. Um, it just seems to look good once it's on there, but uh, definitely doesn't follow the fully scientific reason or where the light would land. And there we are. So we have the second stage of the camo gray. And you can see I'm just building upon each color, getting slightly lighter each time, still leaving some of the darker areas in. So now onto the next stage, which is the camo yellow sand, which really starts to give it that kind of yellow desert eighth army look that we uh, we were looking for. So 
So that was stage three, um, the yellow sand, as you can see, still the shadow remaining in some parts that just give it a little bit of natural variation. Um, next stage is to do the same thing essentially with the sand yellow. Again, just leaving a little bit of each color showing through so you've got a nice fade all the way through. Um, this is a little bit more delicate now because we've already got the other colors on there. We don't want to make any mistakes. So I am just very gently adding in little patches of the lighter colour. And there we go, that's the full stage done through the airbrush. So I've used four colours of the Warfront range that I showed at the beginning of the video. So dark Earth, the Camo Grey, camo yellow sand and then the sand yellow from um, a scale color now as you can see there's a little bit of natural shadow and, and gradation in the color there that's all deliberate um, but now we need to do some oil washes we need to do add weathering powders and need to do um, chipping and streaking and all kinds of other weathering effects um, in order to do that i need to protect the model a little bit if I don't and I go to use those things straight away it's going to stain the paint in the way I don't want to um, it's also going to potentially take the paint off so I'll do the way I'll protect the model is to varnish it um, I'm going to use a gloss varnish and the reason I'm going to use a gloss varnish is because it really really helps um, with the oil washes helps you able to get the, the wash in the crevices and not on the flat surfaces and it's also the perfect prep for a decal um, the smoother surface that the gloss varnish gives you means the decal adheres to it and melts in better. Um, I'm going to go all through those processes as I do them on this on this little truck. Um, I don't want to varnish inside. Um, there's no real need to, um, and I want to glue the 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 the, the top of the roof on as soon as I can. So I'm going to try and keep most of the varnish from going inside um, and then once we've done that we'll take you over to the main part of the desk um, where I'll um, take you through the rest of the stages to completion. So here we are, so we have our glossed miniature all dry now and before I can go on and do any of the weathering I need to get the decals down. That's really, really important. Now I've just recorded a separate video on the full detail process of, of how I put decals on. Um, so I'm not gonna include that here because it would extend the length of this video too long. But um, I will go ahead and just re quickly run through what, I, what equipment I have here. And then you'll see me do it all sped up as you have for the rest of the video. But if you want to sort of, uh, if you're not familiar with putting decals on, um, please do check out that um, other video, which has either gone out a couple of days before or a couple of days after this, so do keep a, a look out for that. Um, so I've got my decal sheet. Um, I'm using these decals. So I'm gonna use the two Desert Rat ones and, and I've already used these on other sheets for my previous two trucks. So I'm gonna use the third set of serial numbers here. They may well not be right. I totally understand or appreciate that. Um, please don't get too angry if it's not historically accurate. I'm going for rule of call. So I wanted my Desert Rats um, emblems on there and I wanted a serial number somewhere on the trucks. So, I mean, a CZ, that might even be a check thing. So maybe I'll pick something else. I can't use the white ones. Um, who knows? Who knows? Let's go for these anyway. Let's pick these ones, they're slightly different. Not gonna lose any sleep over it once it's on it and it's been weathered. And there we go, and that's the, uh, the decals on, still glistening wet from the setting solution at the moment. Now I need to leave those to dry and then reseal them with a little bit of gloss varnish. I could get the airbrush out because they're so small, I'll probably just gently dab a little bit on the end of my paintbrush and paint a bit over to seal them and protect them from the next weathering stages. Um, but I'll probably leave these for an hour or so now. Um, and while I'm doing that, I'm going to cut the perspex I need to go in the front windows. And for that, 
I'll actually be using the tray that I've been using here. So here we go with the, the making the windscreen. Now this is the back of one of the Warlord blisters, those, those are horrible ones that don't stay closed. If you buy stuff from Warlord you'll be familiar with them when you open your box and they're all open and all your metal bits of metal are metal or falling all over the place. But they're great for what you've just seen, so using them as very shallow trays to do things like mixing paints and washes and, and um, and applying decals but they're also really good for adding glass to windows if you, you have a kit that doesn't have them. Now, I haven't done this much recently because most of the kits that I've bought in recent years um, um, from, from Games Workshop will always have the plastic things moulded and going back in the days the all the Airfox, Airfix kits used to have the plastic moulded as well. Um, these Rubel Kiln kits are beautiful but they say they don't have any glass at all and I did want to add it at the front. It's not essential, it really isn't, but I really like the effect you add. If I get over the, the one I've made earlier, I really like the effect you can have when you build up weathering and dust and things on them. Just looks really, really good. Um, so, using this stuff is relatively simple. All you've got to do, and I'm being very careful here because the decals are still drying, um, is, is work out what size you need there, measure it, cut it roughly out, fit to size and then glue it in with a little bit of super glue. Now, things to be aware of, the right stage to do this. Um, I could have done it at the beginning, but then I would have covered it in paint, so I've had to have masked it. Um, I could leave it right to the end and do all of my other painting first, including the oils and things so I don't get it dirty. But I always find that when you glue it on, the, you will get a little bit of frosting from the, the super glue. Um, and, and you can easily cover that up with weathering. So this is the stage that I want to do it. So all I'll do is I'll be placing it in here now, gluing it in. I will quickly paint the bits of the interior that I want to paint. And then I will glue the top of my cab on before I go on to do the other weathering stages. So that's the order I'm going to do it in. What I want to do is very, very roughly get an idea of, of what size I'll need. So using a tape measure, I'm going to see that I need about 27 mil one way. A little bit harder to get it in here and about 10 mil the other. So I'll mark that up off camera because it's not gonna be very interesting to see. Um, and then we'll come back to it in a second. And here we are. So it's gonna be almost impossible to see, I can imagine. A little bit rough around the edges, but it doesn't matter because it's going on the inside of the truck. Um, so you won't see any of the edges once it's all glued in. So what I'm gonna do is place a little bit of glue on this central pillar here. That's a little bit too much. I'm going to take the excess away with the cotton bud here. And I'm going to place a little bit on the bottom. It's quite difficult to do it without getting too much in. And you will get a little bit of frosting. So I've got a little bit in place. And then all I need to do is place my screen in. And there we go, and that's just in place there. So here we are, the uh, decals are on, the, they've been re-glossed over again. They may be slightly tacky still, so I'm gonna have to be very careful when I'm, when I'm filming this. Well, I'd recommend that if you are doing this for yourself, just wait for it to fully dry. But I wanna crack on and, and, and do the video. So now it's the interior of the cab. Now you could put a lot of time and effort into this if you wanted. Um, I'm going to be doing taking a slightly different approach which is to get some base colours down knowing that it's going to be incredibly dark when that's glued on and you can barely see a thing in there and I don't want to waste my time on a truck that's um, not going to spend much time on the table probably it's probably as soon as it's done its job as a transport um, it's going to be blown up or maybe used as cover or something like that so they're fun models but they are gaming pieces and this is a tabletop uh, model I'm going here I'm not going for display so one of the first things I'm going to do is use some fairy flesh just to pick out the hands and arms and the face of the driver and I'm not using the full process that I am using on my infantry in the um, tutorial that's already I've already linked up earlier in this video uh, 
again, purely because you can barely see this guy. He's definitely easier to paint if I left him out and glued him in afterwards. Um, but the way the steering wheel attaches, it's a little bit fiddly. And again, I hate getting super glue on my painted models afterwards. It does mess up a paint job. So, and once you've painted something, you can't use your plastic glue any longer. At least I haven't found a successful way of doing it. So I opted with sticking them in, knowing that he's mostly going to be hidden. Again, if it was a display piece, I would have approached it differently. So that's the fairy flesh done. Um, and while that's drying, um, I'm going to go in and paint it in some Agarest Dunes. Now, I'm just going to add a little bit of shadow into the helmet and onto the uniform. I'm going to thin it about 50-50 with water. I don't want it too, too thick. Again, this is going to be almost impossible to see inside the cab, so it's almost going on like a wash that I won't bother highlighting afterwards. So while both of those are drying now, next stage, this creased old bottle here. So this is scale color, um, flat black. I'm gonna go in and pick out the steering wheel. I'm just using the same matte black to pick out the um, passenger seat and to pick out all the tyres. So we're getting there now, the, uh, all the blacks on, on the tyres as well, all blocked in. Um, the final part is just to add a Dark Oath flesh wash to the now dry skin and again not trying to be too messy I don't want to get it over anything it shouldn't be but I'm not going to spend an awful lot of time worrying about it because once that roof is on the cab it becomes really really hard to see in there and that's that and that is the most basic I've, I've I paint infantryman ever <laughs> <laughs> colour and a wash and away you go but I'm going to glue this on now off camera and as you can see you just can't see <laughs> right so I'll come back in a moment with the next stage so decals on glossed over and protected we've done the inside of the cab the windscreen has been glued in the cab roof has been glued on um, and the tyres have been painted as a, a plain matte at the moment. Um, we are ready to start the weathering process. And the first thing I'm going to do is use oil washes. And, uh, and the reason I'm using oil washes is because they're so easy to um, play around with and they're malleable um, and I think they're great. Now, m most of the time I make my own oil washes, the raw and burnt umber and some artists' white spirits so the non-smelling stuff or Sansador is also called as well. They are fantastic. Pick up pots um, in your artist supplies, even if you're in the UK, places like the Range have them as well. Anywhere that holds a, a, a kind of range of arts, oil paints and things will have them. You can use standard white spirit. It's a little bit harsher. It definitely smells more, so you need to be careful if you're using it inside and it's not ventilated. And also be careful with your paint jobs because it's a little bit harsher um, if you haven't uh, uh, prime if sorry if you haven't protected it properly with a with a gloss varnish then you may have some issues there as well you also get pre-mixed stuff so again this is by scale color and they have a, a range of pre-mixed oil washes um, and this is soil works there's their range and grease and grease is what i'm using on these and i've already shaken it so i'm trying to uh, not make too much of a mess you do need to shake them well the oil um, will, the oil paint itself will separate, the pigment goes to the bottom, like with many other paints. And then you want to use a very old brush because you will knacker them. So what you can do is get a little bit on the brush and I'm doing what's known as a pin wash. Um, and I want to put it around areas where I want to see some shadow and shade. 
let it pull. You can do an all over wash. I often do that on some of the miniatures I do this on. Wait for it to go tacky, then buff it off. Um, but I didn't want to dim the kind of the light color. I like the sun bleach look that I've got here. And then you can imagine that kind of dry atmosphere of the, the desert and that the sun bleaching everything. So I really wanted that kind of to look like the sun's reflecting off everything and it's quite a harsh light. So I'm using this as, as a way of shading, but also a way of adding grime. So it does does both does both jobs. So it's a bit like putting on a an Agrex wash. And it's a bit trial and error here really. So you just plonk it on an area. So now what I do, I clean my brush off. And now I want to go and stop where it's pooling and blend it in. Now the joys of, of oils is that they take a long time to fully dry. Um, even after 24 hours you'll find they're slightly tacky. If you've protected your miniature well and using a gloss varnish, you can go back in with a bit of clean white spirit and just wash them away and then add a bit more back in. So it's a matter of playing around really and slowly dulling your miniature until you, you lose that kind of just airbrush look. So I want to get quite liberal with it here and get it in the crevices. And I can go in and take it off. Some of the areas you can do streaking with it. When it dries, it just looks fantastic. The key is removing the pooling and the tide marking. You get rid of those bits. You can use a cotton bud or a Q-tip as well. It's just in the center of areas like that, removing the pooling. So that's all the oils on and dabbed away. There's a few little areas that I may touch up. I'll let it dry um, and then we'll get tacky at least. And then I can always touch up with a little bit of uh, clean white spirit on the end of a, of a cotton bud if I feel I need it. Uh, but most of the time you don't, especially with the dust wash that's going to be going on afterwards. But I do need to leave this a little while to dry before I do that now. So here we are, oils on and dry. And I did give it a quick varnish using this Galera matte varnish with the airbrush. It's just standard artist stuff, this. I picked it up ages ago in the range, I think. It's lasted ages. Um, obviously not designed for miniature painting. Um, but I've used it a few different ones for miniature painting and this stuff is actually pretty good. So a very thin layer, it thins well with water and it's just taken away the sheen from the gloss varnish everywhere. Now the next stage, is to do a little bit of dry brushing. Now I use Game Air Silver. Now what I want to achieve is just to pick up very, very faintly around the edges where the rivets are, where the paint would have worn away. So I don't want much left on the paintbrush at all. It just gives it a little bit of sharpness um, and also shows wear and tear. we go so I don't know if you can see that whether that the camera picks it up well enough but I've just gone around the whole model and been super subtle really just getting the edges of things the last thing I want to do is to create a, a situation where I've got loads of streaking and things um, and horrible brush marks it really was a very very light dry brush really just designed to catch the edges and things okay so the next stage is to use two colors so to use some Rhinox Hide 
and the same game air silver and do a tiny bit of sponge chipping and the way to do that is to use a little bit of sponge and the sponge you get in your blister packs are perfect for it I dip it in my paint remove most of it and then just make the odd little mark on the model now less is more here it's better to go too light first and not make any mark than let's add anything too large I don't want to add too much here you get the idea Muff the brown on and then do exactly the same with the silver. Sometimes concentrate a little bit more on the extremities. Again, less is more, you can build up and add more if you need it. It's harder to fix it and take it away. You can obviously increase or decrease the amount depending on how weathered and beaten you want it to look. So that's all the chipping and the next stage I'd like to do is put a very few little spots of rust um, and I use my favorite rust me me method which is this uh, rust water soluble paint um, it used to be made by a company called model mates I believe that company doesn't exist anymore but this has been bought by someone else I may be wrong um, but it's absolutely fantastic stuff um, and it's fairly versatile if you paint it on very very thin it sort of stays the colour it is but you can blend it out and it works very well to be stippled over texture as well and make it into a drier rust. What I really want to do is just pick a little point here or there and just do a little streak down. Don't want to add too much. I like the idea that they are looking after the trucks. A certain level of rust or marks here or there is hard to avoid. And here we are ready for the final stage. Um, all the rust is dry, all the chipping's on, everything's ready to go apart from the dusty sand look what we're looking for. So the final stages begin. So I'm going to be using some AK dust and dirt deposits weathering set. And I'm going to be using sand yellow, funnily enough. So that the way I'm going to do that, just off camera, I've got some clean white spirit. I'm ready for washing things away and what I want to do is with my brush again using an old brush is take the sand deposits and just put them in some of the crevices and then with a clean brush dab on clean white spirit and just blend it out you could pre-mix this down as well and that would probably work so thin it down and sort of turn it into a bit of a wash I'm doing it this way to try and keep some control I think if I do it bit by bit I'm less likely to put too much on just like with the oils it's very easy to manipulate and remove again with clean white spirit so you've got quite a bit of time to fix any mistakes you make and just kind of play around with it really when you first start putting it on you do start worrying and thinking oh no have I messed up my paint job but you get quite pleasing results in the end
So the dust um, effect is on most of the truck. Um, I'm going to do some on the tyres as well. Um, I'm going to have a slightly different approach to this. So rather than having it thinned, I'm just going to paint it over the, the whole tyre. And once it's on there, it's going to wipe most of it off with a mixture of a cotton bud and the hands. You're really just leaving what's in the tread of the tyre, what's ground in. Just want it to look like a tyre that's worn, that's been driven on a dry, dirty, dusty environment all day. Regardless of how much comes off it, you've still got that kind of effect and you find your thumbs really good at just getting off the sides of the tyres there. And when it dries, it gives this lovely effect. I've got the tiniest bit of white spirit on the end of the cotton bud now those slightly stubborn, slightly thicker parts, just dabbing it off. I don't want to wipe it all off. And there we are, one finished truck. Still a little bit tacky. I may touch up the odd little part once I've got the camera out of my face and I can have a closer look at it. But hopefully you found the tutorial useful, or at least some parts of the tutorial useful. Maybe there's some things you haven't tried before, some techniques you haven't used, etc. So if you have any questions, please do leave them in the comments below. Any suggestions, always happy to have feedback, etc. as well. Um, I do love painting in this style. I love using the airbrush and then using weathering techniques and things. And I now painted three of these little things. Um, so I all took some nice little pictures of them all, all set up and uh, pop them on the screen now um, so you can see them without me holding them. Um, so thanks very much for watching. Um, I have got lots more bolt action stuff on the channel, including other systems and other periods as well. Um, if you're interested in the bolt action stuff, there is a project vlog for my British 8th Army. Um, I've got another bolt action project that's going to come up and start soon as well, probably after I finish this one. There is a painting tutorial for the British 8th Army Infantry, which I linked at the beginning of the show. Well, well worth checking that out if you uh, like what you've seen today and interested in, in, in painting a similar army or using some of the techniques. Um, but overall, yeah, get involved. Please um, like, share and subscribe and all that jazz. And um, I'll catch you soon.